Hey guys, welcome to an all new episode of Duvall's Collection Expansion Extravaganza right here on ToyWorldOrder.com. We're your hosts, I'm Jason, this is my lovely wife, Hi. Carrie, the younger collector in the house. Yes. She's looking super cute today. With my new shirt. That's super adorable. I love it. Yeah. She bought two Little Mermaid shirts, it's awesome. Oh god. Wow. <laughs> so we had some stuff to show you, and then Carrie broke all of it. Oops. It's like a giant domino effect. Actually, we got a lot of, uh, well, too much great stuff. We've, uh, you know, you guys have been seeing new episodes every week. We actually have slacked off from filming for about a month and a half. And... Yeah, I was going to say, it's all behind us. Yeah, and, 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 and below on the floor, us, and, and in over front here. of us. Yeah, it's... <laughs> we've uh, we've kind of been slacking. But we've been busy on the weekends, which is usually when we shoot this show for you guys. Um, so, uh, I came home from a toy show today and said, uh, hey come film because we have cleanup to do lots yeah. of stuff I don't or at know least i had cleanup well to do. i don't even know where we're gonna put all this when we're done but i will figure it out we need to film that trying to put it, find a place yeah. to put it us arguing as we're trying to find places to put our toys well i have i've purchased lots of new risers from uh our good friends at bed bath and beyond it was a free <laughs> plug for them because that's where i found them but uh, lots of risers to make room for new figures so uh i've made lots of room but um yeah there's uh it's gonna be fun after filming. Anyway, we got lots of great stuff for you guys to sh <laughs> for you guys to show. We got lots of great stuff for you to show. We got lots of great stuff to show you guys. Um, we had some uh, great stuff sent from uh, from viewers and friends of the show and the site. Uh, a couple things for Carrie, which are pretty cute. Uh, one of them comes from our buddy John Solo uh, up in the Missouri St. Louis area, St. Louis Missouri area. He actually found us in Goodwill, and of course uh, Carrie's got an infatuation with Disney babies. Um, and so he sent me a picture and he said, uh, have you seen this? And I was like, I haven't, but I know someone who would want that, a certain redhead. Uh, and our good buddy John was uh, nice enough to send this along to us. Uh, pretty cute. It's got, I mean, it's got a couple missing doors, which isn't a big deal for this one. She just likes it because it's cute. But, oh, you know, the doors opened and Pluto went up and down and Mickey squeaks and the guys on top squeak. And then you've got, you got Donald on the back who... Kind of goes up and down, and there's a little door with a mirror so you can see yourself. This used to hang on a crib, or used to go on a crib anyway, and used to, I don't know if it rotated or what, but uh, just a cute little baby item, Disney babies item for Carrie. Um, she really, really likes Disney babies. They're, they're one of I do. I was sad Goofy wasn't on there, but that's okay. Yeah, no Goofy, but that's okay. Some cute, uh, we'll find a home for it and just display it. It's just a, a cute little display piece for her since it's got Disney babies on it, so... Yes, thank you very much for seeing yeah. that. Yeah, thank you, John Solo. And then, behind me here, our buddy uh, Brent Scrano uh, sent along some stuff for us. And this actually had a note on it that said, uh, not for Jason, for Carrie. <laughs> so I would know that it wasn't supposed to be mine. Uh, yeah, you probably figured it out when you yes. opened it. But he sent along some cute little kids' books for Carrie. One is book. One's a little... Uh, uh, goofy on Vacation. Goofy on Vacation. And the other one is uh, Muppets, uh, what is it? Sweet and Silly Muppet Poems, which is kind of cute. Some of these poems are, uh, here, I'll read you one. Uh, this one starts out with, with Kermit and the gang. It says, uh, our show would be terrific. We practice all week long, but when the curtain rises, almost everything goes wrong. Sometimes the show is awful. Sometimes it's even worse. It hardly ever seems to go the way that we rehearse. That sounds like this. Yes. <laughs> the jokes are all forgotten and the band sounds really weird. Half the cast is missing and the props have disappeared. The dialogue is backward. Someone tumbles on his face. The stage is in shambles. It's an absolute disgrace. Our, our bows are always clumsy. It's a really sad display. But since we do the best we can, it's probably okay. That's just That's, one of the sweet yeah. and silly Muppet poems. Um, cute little books for Carrie yeah. from, from Brent. She actually, she sat down and read them. She does read all her kids' books, unlike me, who get them, flip through them, and go, brown on a shelf. <laughs> 
And then she goes, did you read that? And I'm like, nah, 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 later. It only take you two seconds to read it. I mean. That is true. But uh, some cute little books from our buddy Brent. Something fun for, uh, Carrie was pretty cute on the couch reading them that, or in her chair reading it. She was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> adorable. Super, super adorable. Okay. Um, let's do some stuffed animals. Actually, I want to show this. Um, my buddy Don Blanco, who lives overseas uh, in Europe, uh, in Marriott, England, somewhere around there. I, I'm not sure where exactly. I always forget. But Dom sent along a huge box of stuff uh, about a month and a half ago or so, uh, which we will show some of it this episode. But one of the things I thought was really cool was uh, was this, um, I believe it's, I don't think it's, I think it's, it's not Sully Monster, but it's one of the, the Muppet, the Sesame Street Muppets. It's an old 70s puppet. I mean, he's, he's pretty dirty. I'm sure he found it at a boot sale, which is, uh, for those of you here in the States, that's their version of flea market's garage sales. They're called boot sales because people would literally sell them out of the trunk, which is called the boot. The car boot. Kind of like a butt. You get it? Nah. But a little, uh, a little, um, hi. How's it going? How you doing? Hey, baby. Every time you do that, stuff flies off of him. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so dumb. Um, little Muppet Monster. I want to, I, I swear it's Sully Monster, but it's not. Why don't you look this stuff up before we start? I think he's just a generic Muppet just Monster. A... Yeah, but he's, uh, he's, he's, cute. he's pretty cute. I didn't know they made the monsters like this for puppets. I know they did, like, Big Bird and Ernie and Oscar and, of course, the Muppets. They did, like, the Kermit and Piggy Fisher-Price stuff. And I'm pretty sure this is Fisher-Price. Um, the tag, uh, it is. It is Fisher-Price. It's a Fisher-Price tag on there. Child Horizons Incorporated. So it's basically licensed. But uh, cute little thing from our, our buddy Don Blanco. I'm going to have to, I don't want to toss him in the wash. I may just have to clean him with a wet cloth and clean him up the best I can and figure out how to display him, uh, probably stuff him with paper towels so he'll retain his shape. Um, but he is really cute, though. Ma, 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 ma. Awesome puppet. I love Sesame Street puppets. I love old puppets like that that you just really can't see or find anymore, and they, they really don't make a whole lot of them. Uh, like, cool puppets like that. I mean, they still make puppets, but man, they're not that cool. Uh, something I found for a Carrie, continuing on with the stuffed animals. We've got a few stuffed animals I want to get through. Um, again, back to the whole Carrie likes baby versions of characters. Baby Piggy. How adorable is that? I found this for Carrie at the last King County. She's still got a little bow in her hair, and she's uh, she's in pretty pretty clean condition. Um, I'm not sure. This was done in, I don't even know when these were made. 90, 1990. Um, so I'm not sure if they made more than just Baby Piggy. Uh, I'll try to track some down, but uh, I brought this home, pulled it out of the bag, and I thought she was going to die from cuteness. Yeah. I was like, oh, she look, look her hair. She wears her hair like me. <laughs> yep, just like that. She's in a nice old bun there. Yeah. Super cute little Muppet baby doll. Um, like I said, I really wish I knew if, if they made more of them. We kind of did some research, kind of looked them up. Couldn't really find anything on the company or these little little soft plush dolls. Um, I'm sure that they did some other ones, like maybe a Fozzie and Kermit, maybe Gonzo. Uh, but Piggy was something that stuck out on a table. And I was like, I've never seen that before. And I know a certain little redhead at home who would love it. So, and I did. yes, and I did. she did. But again, it's one more stuffed animal to add to a growing stuffed animal collection that we still have not quite figured out how to properly display. And they're just stacked, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, some we'll figure out here eventually one of these days, but uh, super cute. Kirby! I can't do a piggy, I, I try. I came home with this. And I don't have batteries in him, but he does work. Uh, I came home with this from a couple Toy Man toy shows ago. And Carrie immediately went, really? All I saw was half of his body in the box. And it was the top half. Yes. So all I saw was a teddy. And I'm like, and seriously, it another is... one? But then he pulled it out and I was like, he's wearing a diaper. <laughs> Baby Teddy Ruxpin. This was one of the, the last, I don't think the last few items from Teddy Ruxpin that Worlds of Wonder brought out. But it... Uh, it's one of the later items. They were going to do a baby Grubby as well, and they never got to oh, it. Oh, I bet that would have been cute. He, I've seen video of it, and he's pretty cute. Um, baby Teddy came out, and he was one of the last items from Worlds of Wonder to, to pop out on the retail. Uh, and Baby Teddy was one of the few Teddy Ruxman items that I actually didn't own. Um, and he didn't really work that well, and I, I actually took him apart, fixed him. Got him working pretty good. Um, he's pretty cute. He's supposed to say, I think, about 12 or 13 different things. Um, usually he only says the same two things. But every once in a while, I can get him to say the whole 
you know, <laughs> run the whole gamut of, of, of what he's supposed to say. But pretty cute. His eyes blink. His mouth moves. Remember, remember. Um, I don't want to put batteries in him and show him because the Did dogs he come are down with here. Different outfits. Nope. Nope. No, just that. Nope. Just this diaper and a little teddy shirt. So super cute. Uh, gonna add him to the the Teddy Ruxpin collection. Put him on the shelf. Um, he will fit in nicely, and he's kind of. He's a little dirty. He looks like see, he looks like he might have looks used like he his peed diaper. <laughs> might have peed a little bit there. Um, yeah, he's a little dirty, but uh, nothing that can't be cleaned up. Uh, I was going to wash him when I had him apart, but. The way to get him apart and to fix him, I had to cut the stitch on the back panel here and then restitch it. And I wanted to leave most of the stitching in there so I knew where to continue on so it would look right, look like it's supposed to. Um, yeah, little baby Teddy. But yes, that was a very interesting day. One that our, our good buddy Dave Draper goes, I wish I could be there when you pull that out of the bag. So I want to see Carrie's face. Because <laughs> he knew exactly what she was going to do. I went from mad to... Like super happy in like yes. two seconds. Yes. And I saw he had a diaper on. Well, we've been looking for a baby Teddy for a long time, and we'd seen some auctions and stuff, and never quite won one. And won one, won one, won mm -hmm. one. Um, so it was something that I'd kind of kept an eye on, and uh, this was something I yeah picked up at the last Toy Man, or a couple Toy Man toy shows ago, and he's he's pretty cute. But continuing on with Teddy Ruxman, one more stuffed animal to show is one of the puppets. There was a bunch of Teddy Ruxman puppets. Um, there were a couple of fobs. There was an orange and a purple. Um, there was a, uh, a Tweeg, which was the villain. Um, the Wooly What's It. Uh, basically, there were uh, three reversible puppets. Uh, anything this, that, and the other is what they were called, and they could become any of the things. And then there was uh, LB Bounder, which was Tweeg's little uh, little minion, his little buddy. Um, I've seen this puppet online usually sell for like upwards of $90. And I thought, I'm not paying $90 for puppet, because one, that's ridiculous, and two, Damn straight. <clears throat> but uh, one of the last uh, couple Toy Man shows I went to, um, there was a wonderful lady whose name escapes me right now, and she follows me on Twitter, and I feel bad that, again, I'm good with faces, horrible with names. She'll tell you. Horrible with names. Can remember your face. Can't remember your name. That's because uh, toys. Toys. Mm -hmm. Toys. Very little room for anything new. But she had uh, she had the baby Teddy, and she had, uh, she had LB Bounder, who still has his tag, even though the tag's a little beat up, but... The tag is uh, still on there, which is kind of cool. Um, but uh, LB Bounder was one of the puppets, one of the last puppets I need, other than I still need a purple fob, which I can't find a good purple fob. Um, he's pretty cute though. He's uh, with his little feet dangling. Uh, I always liked these puppets, and I never had any when I was a kid. Um, I had, How much did that cost? Uh, LB Bounder was 30 bucks. So, uh, I gladly would pay 30 bucks for him over 90 any day. A little, a little people may think a little expensive for a puppet, but um, usually if I find a deal like that for something I know I'm not going to see that cheap again, um, I will not risk it and just go take my money um, all day. Just take it. Uh, pretty cute though. Oh, not, I don't know about cute. He's kind of scary. Yeah, well, he's all right. He's got sharp teeth. They bounced. Anyway, LB Bounder Puppet. Let's talk about some action figures. Some. I got a lot of I got a lot of stuff. First thing I want to talk about is something that uh, I've shown off some of these in the past, um, but thanks to uh, a trade on one of the Facebook groups that I'm a member of, um, I managed to trade off some some uh, random GI Joe stuff that I had uh, from an auction recently for some awesome. Uh, the little boxes are beat up, but uh, they're complete, and they're still on card, but some awesome McDonald Land character figures, which, of course, in the past, I think we've, we've shown off Big Mac, but things you didn't know was he had a he had a star that was on. He had a whistle that was around his neck, kind of kind of dangling in there, a little whistle in there, a little whistle. That was gone from ours. It was missing. Um, got a much better Ronald McDonald, who uh, has all his pockets. When we had the pockets were torn off, the zipper thing was gone. Um, he was pretty beat up. The hair was nasty. Um, this this one actually is uh, the the side of it was open, so I can actually take Ronald out. But uh, the head head moves much better. Your sound effects are terrible. Uh, they are pretty bad. So, now I was looking on the back. Yes. And 
And we don't have this playset. No, there is a playset. Uh, let me get through the rest of these and we'll talk about that. Captain Crook, complete with his hat, his sword. Um, it was pretty cool because we didn't have the hat or the sword for Captain Crook. Um, Hamburglar, an, an actual original Hamburglar because we had a reissue. And so oh, this we did? Is, yep, so oh. this is the actual original Hamburglar figure they released uh, with his hat. And then uh, Professor, who was one of the characters. And a lot of these, of course, kids these days or those of you watching that are younger won't remember these. These are from the 70s. They used this whole cast of characters uh, in the 70s, and then they did away with a lot of them. Um, they kept Grimace, they kept Ronald, they kept Hamburglar, and then they brought out Birdie, who was the little yellow bird, of course. Um, and that was kind of the core for a long time. But yeah, there's a there was a big playset, a big uh, McDonald Land playset on the back that had quite a few pieces. It had a talking tree and some stilts for Ronald and a train that went along the track, a bridge. Um, you know, just lots of little pieces. A little McDonald's restaurant that figures could sit at and, and eat. Uh, I've seen this place that I saw at King County this oh. past October, and it was expensive. Like, two hundred dollars spent. Wow. Yeah. So, um, that's one of those play sets that uh, be cool to have. But meh. are we missing any of these? We are. We're missing uh, Mayor McCheese and Grimace, and those okay. are the only two we're missing is Mayor McCheese and Grimace. Um, eventually, I'll track those two down, just so we can say we have all the Rimco McDonald Land figures. Um, and I think we actually, I think I might have actually talked about it on the episode we showed off some of these figures, was the fact that uh, we had a chance on an auction to basically buy the whole set of these. Uh, and they, we forgot about the auction. And when we went back and looked at the auction to see what they sold for, it was like 20 bucks for the whole lot. And they were all loose, they were all complete. I was so, and I'm not I'm angry at anyone, I was just mad at me because I was like, I forgot about that auction. Gosh dang it. But... Uh, you know, we got most of them. Got most of them now, and uh, we have doubles of a couple. Uh, no, actually, the doubles, uh, the Ronald and the the double of the Big Mac, I gave to Dave because Dave had them as a kid, and he was like, "Can I have oh. those?" And I was like, "You can have those, Dave." So I gave them to my best friend. Well, my other best friend, because she's my first best friend by law, marriage. Hi. Hi. It's okay if Dave's your best friend. My best guy friend. Let's put it that way. You're my best girlfriend. You're my best gal. Love All you. All right. So yeah, I gave Dave the extras, but uh, these are going to get open and display just because the cards are beat up. I'll keep the cards and the bubbles probably and just store them because they're nice. Uh, they are very cool. I mean, the, the beautiful artwork on there. Just gorgeous artwork from the 70s. So probably keep them somewhere. I'll find them and put them in a tote. But uh, awesome McDonald Land figures. And then... Uh, to wrap up the the action figure portion of this is a ridiculous amount i'm not going to name all of these i am going to well you'll be able to see pictures of these and i'm not going to pick them all up um i'm a member of a number of groups on facebook that deal in 80s toys uh action figure identification is one 80s toy uh talking traders i think is the name of the other one um and on there somebody had listed a just a ridiculous amount of cops figures that they wanted to sell or trade for loose gi joe's and gi joe vehicles and of course as i said as with the Ronald McDonald, the McDonald Land figures, uh, Dave and I had gone to an auction recently uh, where I had, you know, just won a bunch of G.I. Joe stuff for next to nothing. Most of it was complete. We fixed the figures, matched up their weapons yeah. over a four-hour period. On, yeah. On a, Sat outside and yeah. played with your toys for most of the afternoon. But I basically said, hey, here's the Joe stuff I have. Is any of this interest to you? I'd really be interested in the cop stuff. And sure enough, you know, he took a number of the vehicles and a number of the figures uh, and then, uh, you know, about a week later, I get a huge box of stuff, and it's uh, all of these cops figures, you know, like figures like Buttons, McBoom Boom, who his chest opens up, and he's got guns in his chest. Ba -choo, ba -choo. One, who I said uh, earlier Sun look like Brave Star. Does. I think his name is Sundown. I don't remember all the names of the cops figures, because there are a Can lot I'll, of cops figures here. I don't never heard of these. Is these, this a cartoon? This was a cartoon okay. and a Hasbro line in the 80s. Okay. Um, these were out when I was much younger. Do you, did you already have some of these? Because this is the first time I'm hearing about I had a couple of them that were loose, that were incomplete. I had this guy loose, but okay. he was missing his sled. He was missing his gun. Um, Look, this guy looks bomb. like he's got all his stuff. Yeah, a number of them do. Uh, Berserker has his both his guns. This guy? Yep. Yeah. They had, uh, I mean, they all had cap firing mechanisms. Like, I want to say his name was Sundown, but <laughs> Sundown, if you... If you put, oh, that's the, that that's, this, that's this guy's helmet. <laughs> that's his helmet. Oops. A number, pretty much all of them are complete. Uh, some of them are missing some tiny items. Nothing too serious, but the main, you know, yeah. their main outfit and weapons are here. BP vest, who for some reason somebody cut the sleeves off his vest. He's actually oh. supposed to have full sleeves. Oh. Um, I don't well. know why. Uh, but BP vest, who's, you know, his 
Briefcase wasn't broke, he had his gun. My, one of my favorites, Louis De Plumber. I am Louis De Plumber. Oh, he's, is he's, that? Yeah, that's his name, Louis De Plumber. Plumber? Plumber. Uh, a number of the vehicle drivers, like uh, uh, Turbo Two-Tone, who drove, who came with the, uh, the Roadster for the crooks. Um, let's see, Dr. Bad Vibes and his little robot. He was awesome because his little brain was showing. Um, another one of the, the vehicle drivers. This was the uh, driver of the uh, cop's uh, prison transport. So he's got a little gun and his, his little flip top helmet. So you can see his face. Raw. Um, that is uh, Longarm, who was one of the main characters of the show. I think Longarm's missing his nightstick, but yeah, it looked like there was something that was supposed to go on the side. Yep, his little nightstick. But he's got his he's got his little long arm. Uh, his little, uh, his little uh, handcuff that could shoot out in his gun. Um, Sergeant Mace, who was goodness, a, that's a that is some weapon. Yep, he was the uh, he was another figure that I had with Sergeant Mace, but I didn't have any of his stuff. I didn't have his backpack, his guns, none of that. Um, is this one of them? Yep, that is uh, that's probably one of my favorites. Uh, Apes is his name, and he has these the guns that attach to his arm and the stilts so he can stand up higher. Um, he's a really cool character. He's a prisoner. Uh, Yep, this is, um, oh god, uh, I want to say Rock Crusher, but I can't remember if that's his name or not. Um, he was complete, he had his little his little prison ball and his his uh, his, his gun, and of course, they all their weapons featured, you could put a cap roll in there, and here, you know what, some of these caps are, so you could put a cap in there and okay. it, would, it would pop. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do it again, but yeah, yeah that See? would, uh, yeah. Of course, they never make toys like this anymore today. Um, got uh, Bowser and Blitz, who was one of my Aww. favorites as a kid. Yep, the little robotic dog. Um, I had this one. I still had this one from when I was young. So I still had mine from when a kid, but when I was a kid. But I had no Blitz. Um, I had no gun. I had no gun. Um, so I've got a complete Bowser and Blitz, which is pretty cool. Um, and then a, you know, just a, a whole assortment of cops figures. Um, there's still a number of figures out there. Like I had a, I had a big boss that was complete that I bought at a toy show uh, some time ago, uh, last year I think, and he's been sitting on a shelf forever. But um, these figures are just—they're really, really cool figures. Uh, lots of, lots of big weapons that, you know, the cap firing mechanism was always a cool feature. Um, a great toy line of the '80s that uh, a lot of people don't either don't remember or just, you know, always forget existed until they're like, oh yeah, cops. Um, had a great cartoon. That was, was a lot of fun. Uh, just one of those lines that I had always was like, well, if I can find a bunch of them in one fell swoop that are pretty much complete. Looks like you did. And I did. And I found a number of them that were, you know, pretty much complete. But these are these are great toy line. Uh, awesome, awesome toy line. Um, another one of the vehicle drivers, the helicopter driver. This was the pilot to the helicopter, um, which the helicopter was pretty cool. Um, our good buddy, um, Chad, uh, Chad Plouffe, actually has a helicopter for me that he's going to send me. So I'll have a helicopter for my helicopter driver, which is pretty cool. Uh, great toys, built like G.I. Joe's though. Um, almost pretty much the exact same build for G.I. Joe. You know, they had screws, they, had, they were put together by rubber bands, which held the upper and lower halves together. It, just a great line, great line of toys, great action figures. Uh, let's move on. Show off a couple of uh, a couple of Disney items. Since technically uh, the Muppets is owned by Disney now, we can call this Disney item. Um, Corgi was a, a company that's still around today, I believe, but they did a lot of licensed stuff in the 70s, uh, a lot of die-cast licensed cars. And we'd always seen the Muppet ones that they've done uh, at shows. We've got a couple um, of the Muppet cars, but the one that Carrie really has always wanted is the animal one. And every time we see Animal just loose by himself, he's always beat up, he's always nasty. And usually it's in antique shows or sometimes some of the bigger flea markets we go to. Mm -hmm. And the dealers always want like 30, 40 bucks just for the car. And one of the recent King Counties, the car's all beat up, but I did happen to find uh, the Corgi Animal for $10. Which, I was very uh, happy. Yes. Uh, we are going to open him, I believe, because yes. he's just, he is just, this card is just bleh, bleh. It's my toy. I'm opening it. It's Carrie's toy. She's going to open it. Not right um, now, but I'm going no. to open it. But he's, he's yeah. pretty cute, though. It's it's the fact that, you know, he's he's in a car that's made to look like a drum set. 
and he's he's banging on the drums mm -hmm. as he's driving. Um, very cool, very very cool line. Um, I think we have the piggy from this line as well, and I've had the piggy forever. Um, there you go. You can actually just—it's already halfway open. Yeah, it's already halfway open. He's pretty cool looking though. Um, very heavy. Very uh, yeah. Very solid. Of course, die cast is solid, but don't lick any of it because it's probably uh, lead. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. It's the seventies, probably. Very cool though. Yeah. I, I was happy to find that for her this last King County, and I was like, look what I found you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Carrie was very excited. I love Animal too. I think Animal's an awesome Muppet, but it it, it is Carrie's favorite Muppet of all time. She loves mm -hmm. Animal. Uh, baby Animal, adult Animal, oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Baby, baby animal, animal, definitely, but yeah. Baby Animal, if she could kidnap him and he was real, she would. <laughs> and we would be on the run from the authorities because they would want Baby Animal back and Carrie would refuse mm -hmm. to give her up. To give him up. Uh, one more thing before we move on to some board games. Uh, of course, you know my creepy obsession with Little Mermaid. Apparently it's creepy. I don't find it creepy. I find it awesome. Uh, I found this little keepsake, uh, Princess Portrait keepsake doll. Uh, I don't remember when this is from, what year this is from. 97 is when this came out. Uh, just a little tiny uh, posable aerial doll that came in this, uh, you could hang it. It was almost like a, like you could hang it as an ornament, basically. Um, this is one of those, uh, I mean, she's she's pretty cute in there. She's, you know, she's posable. she got a little articulation. The hair's really cute. Tails, she's got, you know, she can stand. She's got feet. Um, just really, 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 really cute thing. Uh, found this at Toy Man Show. And I was like, I don't have that. And I've never seen that. So I'm going to buy that. And, of course, the back of it, the little card opens up to tell you basically the story of The Little Mermaid. Um, something I brought home. And I was like, look what I found. And Carrie went, oh. I like it. Um, one of those things, I paid 10 bucks for it. But it was one of those last minute, last of the day deals that I was like, kept looking at it, kept looking at it. And finally I was like, I'll take it. Just give it to me. Here's my money. Um, I love finding Little Mermaid stuff that I didn't know existed. Um, much like when we were out and about and we found these shirts. And Carrie loves the shirts that have the sleeves on it. But of course it had Little Mermaid on it. So I was like, <gasps> you have to buy that. Yep. I did. Yeah, she did. She looks super cute in it. This is my little redhead. My other little redhead. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, look. There, there's three redheads. This is awesome. <laughs> this is a highlight for me. But a Little Mermaid uh, Ariel doll. Um, something very fun. Something I'm going to have to rework all my Ariel stuff because I've, we've got a number of new Ariel items that i mm -hmm. going to have to rework to fit everything in. So, awesome, awesome doll. Let's talk board games. Let me show you what I've got for you. None of it's back here. Entertain the masses. Oh wait, wait, how's it go? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> All right, some board game action here. Now, the first board game is something that's never been removed, never been, it's never been played. Um, it is from the 70, 1972. We actually found it uh, this past September, uh, and we were uh, where were we? We were in Volo, Illinois, uh, at the Volo Car Museum, and they have a huge antique mall there as well. And we were walking through there, and we found a, a booth that had nothing but Disney stuff, and it was like it was Carrie's uh, heaven, basically. It was a ton of oh, our dog. It's Chase. There was a ton of Disney stuff that Carrie was like, oh my God, I'm in heaven. It was and, awesome. And, we, and it was all stuff that we'd never seen before. Yeah, it was, it was all like, all tons of stuff that we never, never see. So we spent probably a good two and a half, three hours digging through just the Disney portion of this antique mall. Um, that's how much Disney stuff was in there. And it was just, it kept going. Like it was just, you know, pictures and books and magazines and folders. And one of the things we saw was $15.00 was this uh, Walt Disney from Whitman, Mickey's uh, Mickey Mouse Rickety Bridge Game. And I was like, oh, well, how much is that? Because I'm thinking, oh, that's going to be expensive. I love the tag on it from yep, Sears. There's a Sears tag on here for $1.88. <laughs> Two bucks. And that was regular price for $2. Um, I was like, that's going to be expensive because, one, it's 70s. Two, it's never been played. And three, it's old Disney that you never see. And I was thinking it's probably going to be $60, $70 because that's how much they usually go for. Um, Fifteen dollars, and this game literally has never, ever I'm punched out or anything. Uh oh! I lost uh -oh. a cop's figure. Um, never been punched out. Never. I mean, some of the stuff's falling out due to age, but um, it's just you know, 
it's all here. It's just a fun little cardboard game. Um, you know, it's got some some character stands and stuff to it. Uh, really, really cute game though, where you just basically try to carry your monkeys across the bridge. So the bridge didn't fall over, um, and each character had a little monkey that went on his shoulder. Pretty cute. Um, this, unfortunately, you'll never see played on board, and I'm sure lots of people. Yeah, I think will... we decided we weren't going to punch this. Correct? Yeah, I, I don't don't want to punch this out. Um, we have a number of games that are brand new that we we have for board. Um, dog. Not sure, again. what's wrong with the dog? But he's, he's just been... he wants attention. Um, this is a game that, unfortunately, like I said, will never be played on board, but this is going in the collection um, to be displayed with the collection, not actually with the board games. Um, it's something I would have loved to have played, but the fact that it's in such good condition, it's never been punched out, I really don't want to risk, you know, tearing something or ripping something, and it's just something cute to have. So, awesome board game. I'm pick up my cop's figure that died. He decided it was too much. The world was better off without him and he just tumbled. Uh, next, we've got a couple of arcade-based games, which are awesome. Uh, one of them is uh, based on Frogger, the classic uh, arcade game Frogger from Milton Bradley. This was, uh, I don't know where we found this I one. I think it was the same. Was it in, anti in the Antique Ball of Although? Maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it may have been. It may have been one of those items we found in there. Um, great I think game. I'm the one that saw it. It was like in the, the case, like, to, like this. Oh so all yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. Was like the side of it. So the side. Oh no, this was in St. Louis actually. This was uh, okay. one of the one of the booths in St. Louis we go to is is just you you literally have to have them come open the glass case so you can dig through their booth because there's just so much stuff. And yeah, this is one of the things we found in St. Louis. We were like, ooh, how much is that? Um, looks like a really fun game. Uh, kind of exciting. You can kind of move your frog across the little road here and try not to get squashed. Uh, try to get all three of your frogs across. Um, just one of those classic attempts. They made so many arcade board games that it's not even funny. There's so many of these out there. So this is just one of those classic attempts uh, in 1981 to make board games based on arcade games and kind of bring the fun home uh, way before that you could bring the actual fun home, period. Um, I, I love these games. I think they're really great uh, and look forward to this being played on board uh, sometime in the future uh, in one of the upcoming seasons. So uh, very cool. Last board game before we wrap this episode up. This last one. Hi, puppy dog. How are I'm you? I'm not sure. Sorry. Apologize. I don't know what he... He just really wants to be... He just really wants attention. Oh. Can't He's... see him. He was behind the bar area here whining and scratching at my leg. That's the only reason I picked him up. He is a mommy's boy. Well, he'd been sick recently, so... Yeah, he hadn't been feeling good. Say, I'm old. He's an old little turd. Say, I'll be, I'll be 12 this year. Yeah. Uh, this next one is actually based on the classic Donkey Kong game with some amazing, uh, great arcade work uh, artwork on the front. This game was really cool from Milton Bradley because uh, basically you had a uh, almost like a, a three-dimensional game. Basically, yep, there's a little, <laughs> a little stuffed Donkey Kong. Uh, basically, you had this this uh, this Donkey Kong that you put barrels in and you would push the button down and the you would load the barrels on the top and he would drop the barrels and then you would move the barrel across the board to try to knock down Mario. But it had barrels, a bunch of little fire things, uh, four different Marios, the big Donkey Kong. Um, I had this as a kid and I remember I never actually played it. All I ever wanted to do was put barrels in and make Donkey Kong put the barrels down. I, well, was, I was a simple child. You were also a only child so you really probably didn't have anybody to play with. I didn't. Nobody ever had time to play it with me. Well, now you've got a whole bunch of people. Now i got all kinds of people. It looks fun. Yeah, it does. It looks like a, a very exciting little game. Uh, this is one of those games, though, that uh, for those of you that are familiar with, with Pixel Dan's work, um, he does a show called From Pixels to Plastic. And he's actually played this game on From Pixels to Plastic. So oh. there are a couple of video game board games that I don't know if we'll ever play on board because they've already been done. Mm -hmm. And it's... I'll play it with you. Oh, thanks, baby. We, uh, we actually do play all of our games. We do. We do, and then... Then I take them and play them on the show. Yeah. Kind of have to. Kind of. We, kinda... We're on, like, your practice run. Yep, pretty much. There's lots of uh, lots of looking at instructions and going, I don't I don't know. Just give it give it to me. Just let me read it. No, let me read it. No, just let me read it. So, we, we do not make uh, good bedfellows when it comes to board games sometimes. So, <laughs> uh, fun little game, though. This is a, this this was a, an exciting find, and I think I paid, like, five bucks for Donkey Kong. Uh, there you go, guys. That'll wrap up this episode of Collection Expansion Extravaganza. Uh, of course, make sure you, if you're watching this on the website and you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube yet, go to youtube.com uh, backslash Toy World Order. Subscribe to us. Uh, helps us out. 
Uh, make sure you check out all the great sponsors on ToyWorldOrder.com. Uh, and make sure you follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at Puppet Duvall. You can follow this one at Mrs. Duvall. Uh, and there you go, gang. We'll be back very soon uh, with a brand new episode and, uh, of course, tons more stuff to show you. So uh, we'll talk to you then. Take care.